So the key thing that I want to focus in on here with this execution breakdown is going to be introducing you guys to the order types that you should be using. So the gist of this is that like we need to start paying attention to how we get in and out of our trades. And the really simple way to start this off is to just say, stop being lazy and impatient and using market orders all the time. You need to start when you're doing lower time frame trading. So there's a, there's a key difference between with whether you're scalping or intraday trading. Where with your intraday trading, you actually have to have, have a thesis that you're trading around, and when you're scalping, you realistically don't have to. Um, but what I want to introduce you guys to is the idea of chasing effectively. So when you want to bet on price going in a direction, stop crossing the spread all the time and marketing in when you could just use chase orders. So every platform has different things that they call it. The most common name is going to be best bid and best ask. So I don't care where you trade on what platform. I guess what I should have prefaced this by saying is also stop clicking, clicking buttons on an exchange to begin with, right? Start using an interface, an API interface, a program or something. It's going to give you access to better execution. So from there, you're looking to start using chase orders. When we're doing lower time frame trading, you're uh, pretty much every exchange, your passive orders are going to have less than 50% of the fees uh, compared to market ordering. And on top of that, you're not getting slipped by eating the spread because even when the spread's tight, it's still going to be a base point or two probably. Especially on your shit coins, it's going to be several basis points potentially. Um, if we're talking about shit coins on FTX, right, you're you're getting raped on that spread when you market order. So most of my advice is really not going to be too applicable to FTX because, yeah, I mean, you guys already all know the meme, so I don't even need to say it. But um, on the more liquid exchanges, <laughs> you can really, you you really can save so much money on executing properly, and this really will be the difference between you making money on that. 0.5% move on Bitcoin versus not when we add the when we add this up over time start using passive orders to enter and to exit and market orders should only be for mistakes okay I need to get out of this immediately because I've already made a mistake I need to get in this immediately because I made a mistake whatever it may be right market order like when, when I'm actively trading right now um, on my scalp account I would say less than 5% of my trades are market orders and they're pretty much only when I'm doing mistakes. Um, on top of the, this, that when we use passive orders, it's not just about the fees and stuff, guys. It's not just about the, the it's not just about the money. It's also about getting better entries, right? Because if you do like best, if you do like chase orders, it's not gonna help that much because right, if like, you know, price is 50 cents and you get in at 49 cents, it's not gonna make that big of a difference. But you don't have to always chase when you do passive orders, right? You can, let's find a, a shitty example. Okay. Ma now this is a five minute chart, but let's imagine that this is like a 15 second chart or like this is like a tick chart. So this is like super fast and super volatile. And we just bounce off, bounce off some sort of low. And I want to get long fills to take, take it back up to wherever I think it's going to go. Okay. In this theoretical situation, let's pretend in the order flow, I just saw tons of shorts get clapped and tons of longs get clapped. And it's pretty obvious. Um, what's going to happen is that we're probably going to come back and test the weak shorts that are now trapped. So rather than your, your two options for filling or right, are literally filling right at the, uh, at the best bid, right. But instead of doing that, you can just be patient and wait for price to do this and fill you. Now, I'm trying to explain this as if this was super quick and volatile, right? This is a tick chart where it's doing this the whole time. It's not, this isn't a five minute chart. This is a tick chart for this use of this purpose. So you're just, you're clicking in orders and you're waiting for it to come back to you. The key is to just um, get comfortable with the concept of using best bid, best ask. From there, I should have made the point that you, you need to have different clip sizes. So if you if you trade with like one Bitcoin as your position size, let's say, 
you need to probably break that up when you're doing lower time frame trading into clips. So either into tenths or quarters or halves. I mean, halves is really not going to be super effective. Quarters is going to be good if you're new -er, and if you're pretty experienced, you want to be getting into that tenths bracket, I would say. Where you're breaking your orders up and you're using passive orders to get filled, passive orders to get out, and you're you're scaling in, which is really the the segue to what I wanted to talk about, which is going to be the execution thing which is going to be about taking losses. So you guys should really try to practice how you take your losses. And when you enter in your trades, kind of visualize what it would feel like if you start to go underwater on it. So you take a short, visualize momentum maintaining and putting you underwater and squeezing you and visualize what that feels like and what you're going to do. Don't just enter your position and only think, what's going to, what am I going to do if it goes down now that I've shorted, right? You got to start thinking about what you're gonna do when you're in the trade. So you need, I mean, to each their own, whether you use real invalidation levels or not, but here, here's the lesson today around this, is that when we're doing reversion trading, so we're, we're fading it to take it back to the mean, when we're doing that style of trading, you need to have much looser risk because the likelihood that you're going to enter exactly at the top to sh on your short is very in improbable. If you trade, very, very frequently, you're going to sell the top of the intraday cycle, you know, one out of every 20 trades at best or whatever, right? Realistically, the significant majority of your trades are going to be um, temporarily underwater, even when they're correct trades. So you need to scale in and scale out and use hard stops that are far away from price. So for example, I don't want to just like completely make a thing up but i guess it's just the only way to do it so i want to we're going to imagine this price action continuing to develop throughout the day so let's say it comes back and kind of tests back and i want to find a short opportunity on this okay and my plan is to short into yesterday's value so i think that this is going to hold us back and i'm going to trade around this so the concept is that as i'm seeing momentum fade into the area that i want to short I'm looking for momentum fading as we're driving up into it. And I'm gonna start clipping in on these drives up. I'm scaling up into it, right? So my average entry's here, my average entry's here. Now my average entry's in the middle here because I got a good add on here. And you're waiting for it to eventually start to have a failure drive. And this is pretty much the plan. <laughs> this is literally the pattern that I trade these days on this exact structuring. Um, when you're aggressive, you fade into the upswings. And when you're, if you don't want to be aggressive, you wait for the structure failure and enter into it over here. Here's the real alpha around this concept though. You don't want to just enter in and say, I'm going to take it back to the lows and I'm going to put my hard stop on above this and say, all right, that's my trade. I'm going to AFK and come back and hope it plays out. You, if you want to actually be an active trader, you need to manage this and continue to watch it play out. And if at a certain point, I mean, at the end of the day, it's kind of purely discretionary, but at a certain point, if these drives never are failing and these drives keep going up, you're right, you keep getting um, higher lows and you keep getting higher highs. If you keep getting that, why would you sit in this trade? Eventually, I mean, if you're, if you're shit at this, I mean, a lot of times you're going to end up cutting it and then it's going to show its momentum because you, the key thing is that you can't be too early into this thing because you're going to get squeezed. And that's why the scaling is important, right? So if I want to trade with one whole Bitcoin, hold on, I want to enter in with a quarter, a quarter, a quarter, a quarter. And ideally, I start to get invalidated on my trade if I'm wrong before I'm full size. So let's say like I only have three clips on and we're still making the structuring is still going up. I don't, what, maybe I don't really want to um, to keep adding. Now this is basically, I'm only talking about structure. It's really key that I'm watching the supportive flow, which, how do I explain it without giving it everything away? I wanna see the side that's pushing price in my favor or pushing price up. I wanna see them making mistakes. I wanna see the bullish side making mistakes. And if I see the bullish side making mistakes on these drives, I can be confident. If I see that when, if I see that we put we push up and our, our pull down here, if I see heavy, heavy selling right here, 
and then we start to trade back above it. Is that what I want to see if I am shorting? If I'm in a short right now and we get a down tick and I go I, I go above water for the first time the whole time and there's a massive heavy uh, you know negative delta node that comes in here and then we start to trade back above it again. Is this what I want to see necessarily? No, I don't, right? I, because what what's that telling me? If I see heavy, heavy selling and then we start trading back through it, that's telling me that the bid, the passive bid is moving up and is willing to buy up here. They were willing to buy here. They were willing to buy here. Now they're moving it up to here. Okay. Um, now that's overly, it's, it's contextual because it's overly simplified. It doesn't always mean that heavy selling right here um, is is fucking up my trade because you could also make the argument that right that's also the structure break area where we get heavy selling and we get the structure break so it's contextual you need to kind of feel it out whether um whether that was positive or not in your favor i'm gonna digress for a little bit uh okay actually i'm not gonna digress because i didn't finish where i was going um the last and this is the most important thing right so like, let's say in that theoretical scenario, I've got three clips on and on this most recent drive where I'm, I'm really kind of sussed out about this. I'm not feeling too confident on this last drive right here. We get another lower high that has huge negative selling on it and we start to trade back up into it. What should I be doing at this point? Should I be adding again? Should I be coping and waiting and saying, hmm, maybe it'll break down? Now, guys, I'm going to be proactive. As soon as I saw this play, I'm going to be really patient. I'm not going to close it out into this. I'm going to wait for this type of move and I'm going to do best bid, best bid, best bid, best bid, best, best bid as many times as I need to to get out of it so that hopefully I can get out at basically a scratch trade, right? Maybe I lose a small amount of fees or something like that. Um, this is how you manage your trades. I hope that makes sense, right? I'm not waiting. I have a hard stop all the way up here so that my maximum, so that I know if, if the market just giga chads, I know that this stop plus plus fees plus slippage is going to give me a maximum loss of like if I get stopped out up here basically, okay? But the goal is to manually stop yourself out way before. Now, you won't always have perfect manual stop outs like this. Um, I, this is a perfect example where you get to exit out into entry, you know, into your entry zone. A lot of the times you might have to exit out up here, right? So you're, you short it, your average entry is down here and you might have to take the L down here. But would you prefer to take a 0.5 R loss or a full R loss? This is kind of be, this is a one of the key differences between somebody that makes money on low time frame and money that doesn't because and somebody that doesn't because this uh, will really affect affect your losses. Um, now, just to make sure that I'm not selling you sunshine and rainbows, the flip side to this is if you're too much of a pussy, um, you will close out too, too many trades before they are actually invalidated and you'll lose money to fees and to scratches and stuff. So you need to really have confidence that you have a good read on up or down. 